Welcome to Real Physics. This is my series about great physicists and today I'm talking about Ernst Mach. The man who understood gravity. A bold statement and to appreciate his insights let's zoom back into the 19th century. And of course Isaac Newton was the absolute hero of physics. The man who developed all the modern concepts such as force and mass and velocity and everything, acceleration. How did Newton justify that? Uh, he postulated the existence of absolute space and absolute time. And he said, look, this is the proof for absolute space with the absence of acceleration. You see it at the surface of a rotating bucket filled with water and you see the, the absence of acceleration here and you see the accelerated frame when the bucket is rotating. So, Newton was the absolute authority and Ernst Mach, besides Bishop Berkeley, was the first one to challenge him. In his famous book uh, Mechanics, a historic critical account of 1883, he challenged this bucket experiment by Newton and said, wait a minute, it's not that clear that we have absolute space. Does this concept of absolute space and absolute time, does this really make sense? And now comes a very profound critique. He says, Newton's experiment with the rotating water vessel simply tells us that the relative motion of the water with respect to the sides of the vessel creates no noticeable centrifugal forces, but that such forces are produced by the relative rotation with respect to the Earth and the other celestial objects. No one can say how the experiment would turn out if the walls of the vessel increased in thickness and mass, eventually reaching a thickness of several miles. So, this is a really bold hypothesis. Mach is suggesting that the masses out there in the universe are responsible for the inertial forces, that is, the experiment could, uh, could turn out very well differently if, say, all the universe, all the galaxies would rotate around us. Okay? Maybe the water surface would be flat. Of course, we cannot test it, but it's really a deep problem. We have to solve it. Since he despised any non-observable concept, such as absolute space, he said, we have to rely on what is observable. He suggested that inertia indeed has its origin in all the masses in the universe. And now he got one step further. He said, okay, every mass has inertia, every mass exerts gravity, so if inertia has its origin in the other mass in the universe, so probably gravity has its origin in all the masses in the universe. And this is a really profound thought known as Mach's principle. And of course what he did here, he equated gravity with inertia, which is the famous equivalence principle developed more than 25 years later by Einstein at the basis of uh, Einstein's theory of general relativity. So in this sense Mach anticipated general relativity, but there is another consequence. If you really think that gravity has its origin in all the masses in the universe, then of course a logical consequence would be the gravitational constant itself, Newton's big G, is a function of the mass distribution in the universe. But Ernst Mach could not test this at the time. So many, many years later, in 1953, others such as Denis Schama developed this idea of Mach's principle in a quantitative version and also, as I have mentioned in several videos, Robert Dickey in the, this beautiful paper in 1957 referred to Mach's principle when developing his theory of gravitation. But you can trace back this thought to Erwin Schrödinger in 1925 because Erwin Schrödinger already noted that if you consider the entire gravitational potential of the universe, it's in the same order of magnitude as the square of the speed of light c squared. So, uh, and if you, if you look at history, I've done a history video, you can trace back this even in Einstein's thought. If 
even if he could not make it explicit because even Einstein did not know about the size of the universe in 1915, we are talking about the first cosmological results coming out in the early 20s and, and the end of the 20s. But if you look at Einstein's first idea about general relativity, which is variable speed of light, then you can also trace back this idea in the formula that the potential of the gravitational potential of the entire universe is linked to the speed of light and this is essentially Mach's principle. Had Einstein known about the size of the universe, he probably would have confirmed Mach's thought. There is another video about Mach's principle and the variable speed of light and yeah, what can I say? I mean, it's, it's just unfortunate. This is a fantastic coincidence, the mass distribution in the universe and the speed of light and people nowadays interpret it as flat universe or even as nonsense such as cosmic inflation but the real thing we have to wonder about is gravitation has its origin in all masses in the universe and this is the quantitative confirmation and Smach died simply too early. Now of course Einstein appreciated Mach's work but it would be much too less to call Mach just a predecessor of Einstein uh, in an article in 1916, he said the classic laws of motion suffer from an epistemological shortcoming, which was for the first time pointed out by Ernst Mach in a clear manner. So Einstein was clearly inspired, but general relativity yet is not the same thing as Mach's principle. And Einstein tried to approach uh, Ernst Mach even in a letter uh, in, in before arriving at the at the final form of general relativity. He said, in these days I suppose you have got my work on relativity and gravitation. If all turns out to be correct, your ingenious ideas about the origin of mechanics, despite Planck's unjustified critique, get brilliantly confirmed. For it is necessary that inertia has its origin in a kind of interaction of bodies in full agreement with the spirit of your thoughts about Newton's bucket experiment. But interestingly, Mach wasn't happy about this. He rather grumpily wrote, I learned from the publications I'm receiving, and in particular from my correspondence, that I'm going to be intended to take the role of a trailblazer of the theory of relativity. I can now imagine how the thoughts set out in my mechanics will be reinterpreted by these people. So he felt kind of misused and he was not really in agreement. And I think we need to clarify a little bit the differences between Einstein and Mach. Einstein referred mostly to coordinate systems. He started from Lorentz invariance and said, okay, uh, we have this system and then another coordinate system which is in relative motion to it. And there is no difference in the laws of physics. So Einstein's approach was keep the laws of physics the same in different coordinate systems, be it relative motion as in special relativity or even accelerated motion as in general relativity. On the other hand, Mach didn't focus on coordinate system, he focused just on masses and said, it doesn't make sense to speak of an absolute velocity, we just have relative velocities between masses. And the same thing happens with accelerations. You can't talk about an acceleration, an absolute acceleration. You see the difference to the bucket experiment? We are just talking about relative accelerations. Well, this is not solved to this day. There is an interesting paper by Katz and Lindenbell, but uh, this true form of Marx principle is not yet incorporated in our current theories of gravitational. And look what kind of potential this would offer. I mean, Newton's big insight, you can say that it boils down to this formula, the explanation of local gravity by a gravitational constant and the other masses. So he explains little g, so to speak, with something bigger. And Mach's principle, if properly applied, would possibly explain the gravitational constant big G by a similar formula. So this would be, of course, another revolution of physics, which not took place technically, but you see the enormous potential here. Just consider these coincidences. 
we don't take these coincidences seriously enough in modern physics. I think there are, yeah, sometimes are people talking very arrogantly about Mach's principles and numerology. I mean, this is this is how the biggest accomplishments of, of modern physics uh, took place. We don't really appreciate this coincidence with the gravitational constant and the mass on the size of the universe. A couple of sidelines here. There is a controversy with Max Planck. Uh, I don't really understand how this happened. I think it's very unfortunate that these great minds got into such a pity argument about philosophical questions. And uh, well, Mach is also often criticized because he didn't believe in atoms. He said famously, did you see an atom? Have you seen one? No? Okay, but think about, we are talking about the 19th century. We didn't know about quantum mechanics. We didn't know about probability. We didn't know about wave function. I mean, at the end of the 19th century, the idea of atoms being simple bricks, simple building blocks was utterly naive. So Mach correctly objected to it. Okay. So you can't say, hey, he did not understand atoms. It was just a healthy skepticism at the time, which in the light of further insight then evaporated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, many people just know Mach from the Mach number. This is relatively I wouldn't say insignificant work, but if you look at his other accomplishments, it's just something very tiny, Mach's number. And yeah, Mach was a physicist philosopher in the very European tradition. He was interested in the big questions. He was pondering very deeply about fundamental interactions. Born in the Austria-Hungary monarchy in 1838. He died close to Munich in Vaterstetten in 1916. He died too early and I think we justifiably we could call him the man who understood gravity but maybe we don't understand gravity to this day. This is a beautiful cartoon of Newton's absolute space and then Einstein struggling with the rotating frame and out there in the universe looms Ernst Mach. I've pointed out the connections between Einstein's variable speed of light theory and Mach's principle in this book, Einstein's Lost Key. And I also challenged, if you want, Newton's concept of absolute space and time in this last book, The Mathematical Reality. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it. And if you're interested in fundamental questions, subscribe to this channel.